Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of a Bud and Bowl show with your host, the Holy Bud Bum and Bog Shoes, <laughs> signing into the log boat. We got a real special episode for everybody tonight, straight from the log boat. Um, to start with tonight, today's May 8th, 2019. We are pre filming this episode in its entirety two days early to be released this weekend. And the reason we wanted to do this today, today is a historic day in history right now, everybody. It's going to go down in the history books. Um, let me start by saying it's official. <laughs> the mummies have officially lost. The mummies have lost, everybody. The mummies lost. Just killed Josie's buzz real bad. <laughs> Mummies have actually lost everyone, completely like lost things. the war for the first time since 1971 and before, okay? Because we're going to dive into that too, the history of how mushrooms became illegal in this country along with cannabis. Uh, prior to 1971, but since then, about 45, 50 something years now, psilocybin mushrooms have been illegal, illegal in this country thanks to Lyndon Baines Johnson and his fucking mummy scum buddy Richard Nixon. Skinos, okay? Well, today, Denver actually decriminalized the most psychedelic mushrooms or psilocybin mushrooms as they're known, and the first city in the United States to do so since they used to be legal before Richard Nixon and Lyndon Johnson. So let's go ahead and take a hit. I got some of this uh, cobwebs right here. We're going to be smoking some of that good cobwebs. It's one of our go-to strains lately from my doctor. And I even got some of this stuff. I don't know the name of this shit, but I nicknamed it Dirty Footsoles. <laughs> because when you smoke this, it literally tastes like somebody's dirty foot. That's pretty much what the taste of. It's pretty nasty, actually, but I guess it's better than nothing. So we're going to be smoking some of that dirty foot soles there. And then we got this cobwebs that we're going to be smoking. So this is everybody's cue. Get your bongs, your joints, your blunts. Get them all lit up and celebrate with us. Denver legalizing psilocybin. Way to go, Colorado. <laughs> Which, in fact, we are going to shortly here, within the next six months or so, we're going to be moving from Oregon to Colorado because we're fed up with Oregon and their masquerading mummy shit out here, and obviously... Especially with that freeze now, I'm growing. Yeah, I'm growing. Nobody can grow no more. So, obviously, Oregon regrets uh, legalizing cannabis, whereas Colorado's leading the nation in its mummy reform policies. I don't call them drug reform, I call it mummy reform. <laughs> mummy reform. We're reforming the mummies. Everybody go ahead and take a nice hit of their log shoe. Here we go, let's get it started. You got the boat already in the water. <coughs> boat just went right in the water. <coughs> <coughs> well, uh, Kate. <coughs> <coughs> oh. Now keep in mind this episode might be a little longer than usual because we got a lot of topics tonight. <coughs> Starting with the psilocybin. Okay, here we go everybody. Let's dive in. Now, in case anybody's wondering, every link to um, every article or PDF or whatever we read here on the Bud and the Bowl show, you go down to the description of uh, this show, this episode, and uh, look in the description, you'll see sources at the very bottom, which lists every source we get our information from, our news, because we're very about facts here at the Bud and the Bowl show, and any PDFs or any other thing like that. Let's start. Now, this was from NBC News, my favorite news station. Um, let's see, this is a couple hours ago, actually. Denver votes to become the first city to decriminalize magic psilocybin mushrooms. A nearly final ballot count has the measure passing by barely more than 1% after it appeared voters would reject it late Tuesday night. We were following this and gonna cover it last night, but we didn't know this information until today. Um, this was published at 7.47 p.m. and it's 8.48 right now, so this was less than an hour ago. This is breaking news, everybody. It says, Denver is set to become the first city in the United States to effectively decriminalize the psychedelic substance in magic mushrooms. And note, they didn't call it a drug, they called it a substance. Props to NBC News for getting it right. 
for once, which they yeah, usually do get it right. NBC is pretty good, you know. They're not like Faw News where they would have called it a drug and Satan himself and fucking <laughs> this and that and all the bullshit. At least they called it a substance. It's not a drug. It's God's medicine, for Christ's sake. Yes, it's a substance. That's right. They did a good job of... saying it. Oh, you see, when my PTSD start, man. They did. They did a real good job saying it like that substance. A medical substance, not a drug. You start calling it drugs, people get the wrong ideas about that. They do. And it says here, um, in magic mushrooms, but only after it appeared... Hold on one second, folks. Small technical <coughs> difficulties there. Sorry about that, everybody. It says, but only after it appeared on the ballot measure would, would, but only after it appeared the ballot measure would fail in a tight race. The measure, sponsored by a group of citizen activists, appeared to have passed Wednesday by a 1.12% margin. The mummies have officially lost! <laughs> Say it again, because I love saying that. <laughs> According to Thanks NBC affiliate, it really does. KUSA, the move underlines Denver's role in shaping the national conversation around dr mummy reform policy. They call it drug policy. I call it mummy reform policy. Um, the city decriminalized marijuana possession in 2005, which I didn't know. That's pretty interesting. Denver decriminalized it in 2005 for cannabis. And seven years later, Colorado followed suit at a state level in 2012. Supporters of the initiative touted the substance's use in alleviating symptoms of mental health issues. The push was led by a former cadet at the U.S. Military Academy at West Point who said the substance psilocybin dramatically alleviated his major depression, which it has been known to do, and I'll touch more on that later. Initiative 301, as it was known locally, effectively changes city code to say that enforcing laws for possession of psilocybin mushrooms by people 21 or older shall be the lowest law enforcement priority in the city and county of Denver, meaning it can basically be ticketed. You won't be arrested for it no more. It appeared late Tuesday night that the decriminalization would fail with 52% of voters rejecting it, mummies, but late finally... Late final ballot counting inched it just above passing. If the results hold, they will officially be certified May 16th, but the bill still won't fully legalize the hallucinogenic. Thank you. It will still be illegal to possess magic mushrooms, and the sales of the drug will be considered a felony. The federal government, which outlawed psilocybin in 1968, classifies it as a Schedule One drug with no currently accepted medical use and high potential for abuse, the same as cannabis and the same as heroin, the same as every other thing that's on Schedule One, the filthy fucking Nixonite mummies. All safe drugs, pretty much, except for heroin. Heroin's not safe, but all yeah. the other stuff on Schedule One is pretty much safe. Peyote, mushrooms, acid, cannabis. Heroin's like the only dangerous thing up there. <coughs> says Denver is quickly becoming the illicit drug capital of the world. Jeff Hunt, director of the Centennial Institute at Colorado Christian University, a conservative think tank, told the Los Angeles Times ahead of the vote. Let me break it down for you, everybody. Pure mummyism, and because he wanted to throw that word Christianity in there, I'm going to basically say that was probably, I'd be about 99% sure that was a filthy fucking cult, okay? Because there is a such thing in this country that these cults, which I ain't going to go into a major spiel about it, but these cults like to come out, hiding behind the, the religion thing to protect themselves from paying tax dollars, acting like they're followers of Jesus, and come out against God's medicine and literally turn it into a fucking literal devil, basically, because they're not getting enough money in their cult, but yet their wine floating their livers down a river of Jack Daniels is perfectly acceptable, everybody. I mean, perfectly acceptable. Get some roses to your liver and die. That's fine. That's you, just fine. One thing, you cannot die from taking too many mushrooms. Nope. Just like weed. You just like weed. You die from... Smoking weed. Exactly. Yep. Never even been one recorded case. Nope. But yet it's a Schedule One drug. Now alcohol isn't though. Floating livers down rivers of Jack Daniels is just fine. Floating livers down rivers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it actually rhymes. 
Mayor Michael Hancock, who reportedly opposed the initiative, according to the Washington Post, did not return a call from NBC News. Okay, so Mayor Michael Hancock, everybody, is a filthy, no-good, bandaged fucking Nixon tomb mummy. There ain't no way around it. <laughs> now, how do you like it now, Hancock? Pull out your Hancock and sign some more papers, you stupid fucking mummy, you ignorant bastard. Right out of his tomb. Right out of his tomb. <laughs> City District Attorney Beth McCann also opposed the initiative, another mummy again, partly because the city is still trying to understand the effects of marijuana decriminalization. No, they're not, you ignorant fucking mummy. They already are making billions of dollars off marijuana decriminalization. It's been decriminalized since 1995, you ignorant moron, you asshole. You now my PTSD is really going good because I can't take these God-blessed mummies. <laughs> Yes, but like I said before, the good thing is, is that to step forward, <coughs> you know, I mean, outrags. <coughs> <coughs> oh, oh. There's another message about mummy again. <coughs> <Another> message. <laughs> See, we're going to start having the messages coming in now, because people are wanting to know about what happened with this room which we're talking about. Okay, that was the end of that article, everybody. We'll include a link to that in the description. <coughs> Take a sh really short break here. <coughs> and then we're going to come back and we're going to start talking about the history of mummyism in the United States, part two to last week's episode. It ought to be pretty good. There's another, <coughs> another one uh, message. I'm getting a lot of messages right now about these mummies. People are all, you know, talking about the legalization and stuff. We'll, well be right back. this is big news. That's the first time our nation has ever, ever did done that. that. Yeah, ever. It's Literally, very ever. Big news. This is the biggest, like I said, it's a part of history right now. That's yeah, why it we're pre filming the Bud in the Bowl on Wednesday instead of Friday, like we usually do, because this is history we're making tonight. Okay, let's take a short break here. We'll be right back after these messages, everybody, in the log pipe. Uh, boop. Okay, everybody, that brings me right now to what I wanted to cover last week, but I didn't have enough time in the episode. Some people might have heard of or may not have heard of what's called the Boggs Act of 1951. Now, this was one of the Henry Asslinger's major tomb um, attacks in 1951. Let me read it off of Wikipedia. It's pretty short. It says the Boggs Act of 1951 amended the Narcotic Drugs Import and Export Act and set mandatory sentences for drug convictions. A first offense conviction for marijuana possession called a minimum sentence of 2 to 10 years. Minimum now. Minimum you could receive for being caught with marijuana in 1951 was 2 to 10 years and a fine of up to $20,000 all the way back then. Wow. History, the act was sponsored by Hale Boggs, a outright dirty, filthy mummy who I'm not even going to get into, a Louisiana Democrat, no less, a real bad mummy, should have been That's a Republican, unusual. very unusual. On November 2nd, 1951, Harry S. Truman signed the act into law. On January 4th, 1952, under the provisions of the act, over 500 were arrested. Now, we'll have a complete um, link in the description to anybody that wants to go research about what this Boggs Act actually was. It was basically, other than the 1937 Tax Am Act, Stamp Act um, for marijuana, this was basically the next big strike of Harry Aslinger against um, the, the hippies, you know, and the people who smoked the stuff. And now if you want some early day mummyism, because we were going to talk about history of where the mummyism really started, we got to go back to 1914 to the Harrison Act. Harrison Narcotics Tax Act is what it was called. In 1914, it says the Harrison Narcotics Tax Act was a United States federal law that regulated and taxed the production, importation, and distribution of opiates and coca products, meaning cocaine. The act was proposed by Representative Francis <coughs> Burt Harrison of New York and was approved on December 17, 1914. An act to provide 
for the re registration of with collectors of internal revenue and impose a special tax on all persons who produce, import, manufacture, compound, deal, and dispense, sell, distribute, or give away opium or coca leaves, their salts, derivatives, or preparations, and for other purposes. The courts interpreted this to mean that physicians could prescribe narcotics to patients in the course of normal treatment, but not for the treatment of addiction. Now, basically... What this is, and uh, the reason I wanted to bring this up, is this starts to go into an actual background of what, you know, how drug prohibition started. In 1914 was the year cocaine became illegal, and up until 1914, pretty much everything in this country, including heroin, cocaine, cannabis, mushrooms, and whatever else they would have known about back then, was perfectly legal for anybody to do. You could go right down to a pharmacy and buy literal heroin in a needle and shoot it up. It's actually, that, it was that bad. <clears throat> wow. Smoking a little bit of that tangy we got left at 94% cartridge. Let me see that other thing I had here that I want to read off. Um, if I can find it, there's, there's a few points. They actually talked about the Sears Roebuck catalog in those days. Um, so this is about Johnson here. Take a quick break, everybody, while I find this article. Everybody, now I wanted to read this. This is about old Beagle Ears, uh, Lyndon B. Johnson. Um, I, I wanted to get this out because in, in this country, uh, mushrooms and LSD and all that stuff were actually made illegal by actual Johnson, not Richard Nixon. Nixon just went ahead and made it worse. But to start with, they were made completely Schedule One by Johnson. Let me read a, our small article here. It says... The 1960s in the United States were a time of social and political unrest and upheaval. The 1960s were characterized by the Vietnam War, flower children, rock and pop music, the counterculture movement, the trial of the Chicago 7, the fight for civil rights, Woodstock, and a significant increase in the use of recreational drugs. Some health, political, and law enforcement leaders and authorities were concerned about the increase in the use of not only illegal drugs, but also the use of abuse of what was otherwise legal drugs, or drugs that had not yet been officially declared illegal, such as LSD, which was legal back then. Then there was those who outright opposed the counterculture and eagerly sought to punish its act activists, and activities like Richard Nixon and like Johnson. And hippies. And hippies, you know, the, the mummies basically wanting to kill the hippies, genocide them. Says the Food and Drug Administration went so far as to take the position that the traffic in heroin and other narcotics was being overshadowed by these types of drugs. In response to this, Congress passed the Drug Abuse Control Amendments of 1965, and the law was signed by President Johnson Beagle Ears. That was, these amendments were aimed specifically at controlling or outlawing three classes of products. Number one, depressants, known as barbiturates. These are addictive tranquilizers. Number two, stimulants, known as amphetamines, commonly called speed. And number three, hallucinogens, such as LSD and mushrooms. The act allowed the Secretary of Health, Education, and Welfare to designate certain stimulant, depressant, or hallucinogenic drugs as controlled, requiring licensing for sales and distribution. The law went into effect in February 1966. Hallucinogens were essentially banned, and the sales of amphetamines and barbiturates were restricted. In signing the bill, Johnson said, The Drug Abuse Control Act of 1965 is designed to prevent both the misuse and the illicit trade of potentially dangerous drugs, especially the sedatives and the stimulants. I cannot express too strongly my determination that this good and decent and law-abiding society shall not be corrupted, undermined, or mocked by any criminal elements, whether they are organized or not. I believe that most Americans share this hope and share this determination. Now, this was actually, see it says, in response, Sandoz Pharmaceuticals, which had manufactured LSD, ceased its production in August 1965. Up until 1965, LSD was actually legal in this country. Oh, it's the, yep. there it is, log okay. case. 1965. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay, everybody, we're back and we're showing it. Now, pretty much there ain't going to be no mummyism, so go ahead and get your bongs and your blunts lit.
<laughs> yeah, today is a real historic day, you know, with that decriminalization like that. that that's unbelievable. Even further is my opinion, too, that we do need to move to Colorado. Yeah, it is something. You see, I started thinking a while back we should go to Colorado, and especially now that Oregon had started what they started here with not allowing uh, growing, and they started you know, limits on growing, inspecting grow houses, just a bunch of mummyism, basically. And now that Denver is decriminalized like that, that's a major step forward. You're going to see... Uh, pretty soon the whole state of Colorado is going to decriminalize them. Then pretty soon they'll legalize them like the marijuana is. And they're going to start you know, mass producing and selling these rooms. And that way everybody's going to have access to be curing PTSD and mental problems and depression and all this different stuff. And it's actually going to be a real benefit. The government's going to be making money, or actually not the government, I should say the state, because the federal government don't want to pull their head out of Nixon's tomb and start making tax dollars. They want to keep it illegal, so the state of Colorado will be making a bunch of tax dollars, I should say. But see, <clears throat> they need to <clears throat> decriminalize and then to legalize. Yep. <clears throat> Which I think that's the route they're going, because see, here in Shithead, Oregon, they were supposedly going to try to go medical with them and then uh, uh, legalize, but they're not even going to get, I guarantee you, they're not even going to get the medical here in Oregon. If they only got it by 1% there in Denver, I can guarantee damn well to you here in Oregon, they're going to not even get it at all. Yes. <laughs> not as many mummies as there is here in Oregon. <laughs> Smoking their dirty foot soles right now. Oh my God, I shouldn't have said that because I just literally got no, a mouthful of it. it. <sighs> Shit, I'm going to take some of this coffee. Oh. It almost tastes like fucking perfume on the exhale. Jesus Christ, I don't know what that stuff is, but I don't like it. <laughs> Oof. That cobwebs taste way better than that damn shit. Uh. Yeah, we're showing it pretty good, everybody, on this historic day today. Now, like they said, if all goes well and the mummies don't attack from the grave, like I like to call it, like how Donald Trump became president... And we have some mummies attack from the grave and make some hidden votes, you know, like 10,000 hidden votes show up from some corner of the mountains in Colorado saying that, you know, those were never counted and this and that. And all of a sudden it becomes illegal again. They're not decriminalized. But other than short of that happening on the 18th, we should be in the clear for it to be decriminalized. And then I don't know how that's going to work. Hold on, I think the sound's off. Okay, we're back, everybody. I think the sound went out for a second there. I had to check it. <laughs> but, yeah, this is just a, it's a real major, major step forward with them doing that there. And it showed me, you know, I've always liked Colorado. When I first went there, first time in 2014, it's a beautiful, beautiful state. I'd say probably the most beautiful state in the whole country. I think it's even more pretty than Alaska, actually. I've never been to Alaska, but what I've seen of Alaska... Colorado has pretty much everything Alaska does, except the grizzly bears and the Kodiaks and all that sick-ass, you know, shit like Dangerous that. Dangerous stuff. Dangerous stuff. So I think we'd really love it out there. And then not to mention, I've seen Colorado has a lot less mummies than here in Oregon. Oregon's full of mummyism at this point. You know, there's mummies all over. There really is, and that's, that's the God's honest truth. There's mummies everywhere you go. What I was thinking earlier, I wanted to say, is, you know, I'm happy that passed, because when I seen some of those articles of it not passing, and these, these reporting agencies, even Time Magazine actually was real quick to jump on the report that it did not pass, and we were going to do the show about it not passing, because we were pretty, were pretty sure that it didn't, but now seeing that it passed, I'd like to say one thing. Mm -hmm. How do you feel now, mummies? And I'd also like to say this, I would love to see Prohibition come back to where that liver floating poison in a bottle became illegal with these mummies, and I guarantee you, you'd see the worst powder keg ever in this country, it'd be worse than a Boston Tea Party when those mummies 
could not, like Joe Biden, that ancient tomb monger, he's one of the last living ones left, couldn't get his Jack Daniels or his Jim Beam and float his liver down that river. You know, I'd like to see how they like it and how they feel, only they're not using that liver poison for a medical purpose like a lot of people use these mushrooms or using cannabis for it. You know, so they, they don't understand quite how people feel when you need this shit medically and you can't have it because it's illegal because of Richard Nixon. See, that, that's the whole point. That's the point. Yeah. You know, they would know how it is to not have their, their I guess, their, their substance to make them feel better because that's how they use that alcohol. But. but see, now they're saying, too, that uh, there's a little bit of evidence coming out about if you microdose with those mushrooms, mm -hmm. that can help, us, like, with PTSD and... Yep. It helps to cure it, I heard. I act, Yeah, i seen that article. Somebody um, sent it in. Um, I forgot what I did with it because I would have done a show on it, actually. That one gentleman actually claimed he microdosed with mushrooms, the psilocybin variety, and that he actually cured his PTSD to where he didn't have it no more. And that was pretty mind-blowing because there's another condition that these Frankensteins, you know, doctors with their lab coats that think they're Jesus Christ or some of them even think they're outright God going around telling you how long you're going to live will try to tell you that's uncurable completely. You'll, you'll live with the rest of your life and you're going to need pills for it the rest of your life. Well, guess what? <laughs> Cannabis for that's one. That's right. That's absolutely right. That's absolutely right. It's how Big you pharma. It. Big pharma. Cannabis for one, and then very possibly even those mushrooms too, microdosing. And there you go. You cured it. Look at you, how you cured your diabetic retinopathy. Yes. Using nothing but cannabis, everybody. Mm -hmm. And that's a very dangerous disease. It can make you go blind. Yeah, it can. You know, and you actually cured it using cannabis. Mm -hmm. God's medicine. So these yes, mummies need did. to wake up and they need to come out of their tombs and they need to realize, you know, there's people like us out here to use this stuff medically and, and just get off of this Nixon fucking bandwagon. It's, it's over 50, 60 years ago. I mean, come on. It's, it's, it's ancient news. And Joe <laughs> Biden needs to realize that too and come out of his fucking tomb. It takes education so that way, you know, it really does. Can understand. And like we tell anybody here on the Bud and the Bull, don't take our word for it, please. Anybody who watches this show, if you don't know about these mushrooms or you don't know about cannabis, get on Google and Google some of it, but just be careful that you're not looking at what I like to call a complete mummy website, because they are out there <laughs> saying that, you know, very in disguise, too, like parents opposed against pot and stuff like that, these .org websites that are literally so against marijuana, it's not funny. But don't go to one of them. Find you a real good, reputable .org website that's really, you know, tells you the truth. And look up and Google some facts. Even Google, like, how many deaths have ever happened on psilocybin and see what you find. Because there isn't any. These substances are safe, everybody. The government's been lying to you for 50 oh. years now. And today they actually broke the mold in Colorado and did something no other state or no other city has ever <laughs> done before. And I'm even excited to hear that our ex-home state of actual Illinois is going full force with their governor. They elected Democrat J.B. Pritzker and by next year are going to have fully recreationally legalized and allow home grow too, <laughs> mummies, <laughs> you filthy tomb mongers. That shows you what a democratic state will do. Maybe some of these Republican states like Florida should take a look at Illinois and see what they're doing. They're allowing up to five plants to be growing in the home. At Pritzker ain't playing games. Did exactly what he said he was going to do. I got a lot of respect for that guy. He didn't flip-flop like some of these fucking clowns. Like that clown we got for a fucking president right now. He actually got in the office and did what he said he was going to do. Legalizing cannabis. Well, eventually, let's hope the whole country goes that way, which it will. Which it will someday. It's just, who you know, the waiting part's kind of insane <laughs> sometimes because I feel bad for these people in these illegal states. I know how it is because, you know, 10, 20 years ago and stuff, you know, there was no place, you know, I didn't know about California was legal for years. You know, shit, 2008 and nine, we were living in Florida. I had money and everything. I could have went out west. I didn't even have a clue out west that they had medical and all this and that that was practically legal you know I didn't know that I really didn't nowadays it's like such a well known thing everybody knows it if only I knew what I did now back then 
Shit, I would have came out west years ago, but I probably would have, instead of coming to fucking Oregon, I would have went to, we would have went to Colorado, which we're going to end up having to do, because I'm tired of Oregon. We're, we're, we're just sick and tired of the bullshit, which we'll talk about that in another episode, because we're not going to have no mummyism. And with that, everybody, we'll leave you with that as a final thought in the log pipe. Hope everybody enjoyed this breaking news episode of a Bud and a Bowl show. Your host, the holy Bud Bum and Log Shoes, <laughs> signing out of a log boat. Oh, pipes! Pipes! <laughs>